أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وهل أتاك نبأ الخصم إذ تسوروا المحراب إذ دخلوا على داود ففزع منهم قالوا لا تخف خصمان بغى بعضنا على بعض فاحكم بيننا بالحق ولا تشتط واهدنا إلى سواء الصراط إن هذا أخي له تسع وتسعون نعجة ولي نعجة واحدة فقال أكفلنيها وعزني في الخطاب رب الشحل صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل لقطة من لساني يفقه قولي فالحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Assalamu alaikum Quran Weekly Today inshallah in the 23rd juz and surat Saad the 38th surah of the Quran we're going to take a few lessons from the story of Dawood alayhi salam and part of this conversation is that we in Islam have a great deal of respect and honor for the prophets and even though we have the same names for prophets that the Christians and Jews have in their traditions, of the various traditions that they have. The way we think about prophets is not how they think about prophets. The way we respect prophets and the way we honor them is not the way they respect and honor them. The same story that's mentioned in Quran about Dawood alayhi salam being in his mihrab, in his praying quarters, and of course he was a king, so, uh, and a khalifa actually, not a king. Uh, they call him King David, we call him Khalifa Dawood because Allah calls him in that Ya Dawood inna ja'alnaka Khalifatan fil ard. Someone who's left behind on the earth to take responsibility of executing Allah's commands. Anyhow, so people scaled the, the walls of the fort and came into his praying quarters. So they came into the most private quarters of the, the castle. A bunch of people. So he's obviously shocked. And you know, so fafazi'a minhum, the ayah says, إِذْ دَخَلُوا عَلَى دَاوُدْ فَفَزِعَ مِنْهُمْ they started, he was kind of terrified of them and he was taken back them. Faza is actually shock, fear that stems from shock. So he's taken back and shocked and he doesn't really know what's going on. They say, Qalu la They said, no, 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 don't be afraid. Khasmani baga ba'aduna ala ba'd. We're just two groups of people. Some have wronged the other. Like we're in a big argument right now. So you need to help us out and kind of clarify the situation. So it's not two people that scale the wall because tasawwaru is used, the Arabic word tasawwaru. The u at the end is plural. فَفَزِعَ مِنْهُمْ he, he got afraid of all of them, not minhuma. Minhuma would have been he's afraid of two of them. So a bunch of people just come into his quarters. And Dawud can handle himself, obviously. He's the one that killed Jalut, so he can handle himself. But a whole bunch of people just, you know, rushed into his house after scaling a wall. He's kind of not, you know, uh, taken back by it. He's not really in the right state of mind. And they said, no, 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 don't be afraid. We're here to discuss an issue with you. Some of us have wronged the others. You know, this is my brother, he's got 99 sheep, and I only have one sheep. And he wants, you know, so he says, Akfiliniha. Just give it to me, man. Just give me that one sheep. What are you going to do with one sheep? Akfilniha. Wa'azani fil khitab. And he's very like bullyish when he talks to me. He's like, come on, just give it up already. I've been telling you to give, it, give me this sheep. So the guy who's obviously got one sheep is the guy speaking right now. And, you know, Dawud alayhi salam listens to this case and says, this is his verdict. He says, "Inna hada actually qala laqad zalama kal bi su'ali najatika ila ni'ajihi." You know, you've wronged this guy by asking for his one sheep to add to your sheep. You wronged him. Wa inna wa inna kathira min al khulata illa yabghi baghuhum baghd ala baghd illa aladina amanu amil salihat wa qalilum mahum. And you know, a lot of times business partners end up wronging each other. How true a statement, right? How a lot of times business partner partners. End up, you know, messing each other up, or taking advantage of one another. Except those who truly believe and do righteous deeds. Well, and how few those are. Uh, now, then they disappeared immediately. Those angels, he passed the verdict and dis disappeared. and Dawood realized we were testing him. So, so he made a istighfar to his master and he fell into sajda and he repented. So this is by the way an ayah of sajda, so once you're done watching this video, go make sajda, okay? Because I gotta make one too. But anyway, let's finish talking about it first. The Bani Israel position, the Israeli position, the biblical narrative of the same story is that ma'adhullah, thumma ma'adhullah, this is not something we say about prophets, that Dawud was interested in the wife of one of his generals. And he actually sent that general off to battle 
So he could fight and be killed and then he could marry because Daud had already 99 wives, he wanted one more. So Allah taught him a lesson of not wanting that hundredth wife by bringing these people in with their sheep problem and all of that. And that's why he made repentance. Our narrative in the Qur'an is very clear. First of all, we don't accept that narrative because it accuses prophets of something we don't even expect from bad Muslims. How can we accuse a prophet of that? But second, more importantly than that, the ayat themselves have the answer to what really happened. A bunch of people came into his court. He was shocked. Obviously, a judge, when he's about to judge a case, cannot be in an emotionally traumatized state. That's the first problem. فَفَزِعَ minhum. He was shocked by them. He was taken aback by them. He wasn't in his right state of mind because of them. Then they started doing his case. And the guy said, this is one sheep, and this, you know, he wants my, my sheep. But a judge, in his right mind, if he's in his right mind, is supposed to say, hold on. What's your evidence? Number one, you've made your case, but what's your evidence? And let me hear the other side, even if you're calling him guilty. You calling him guilty doesn't make him guilty. Let me hear what he has to say. But in the story, Dawud rushed to judgment because he was taken by surprise. He rushed to judgment and he passed the judgment immediately on one. And he said, you've wronged your brother by asking him for, for that one sheep. And immediately they disappeared and he realized, I should not have rushed, rushed to judgment. I should have calmed down first, understood the situation fully, asked both sides their opinion, then I should have passed my verdict. The lesson I'm learning here is don't rush to judgment. That's what he made repentance for. And so then Allah says, Ya Dawood, inna ja'alnaka khalifatan fil ard, fahkum baynan nasi bil haq. Here's the lesson learned. Dawood, we have made you a khalifa in the land. Then judge between people with justice. If this was about him being a criminal, the ayah would have been, we have sent you a khalifa on the earth, then be fair yourself. If this was about him and wanting a hundredth wife, then the verdict at the end of it, the lesson to be taught to Dawood would have been, you should be fair yourself, okay? Have you learned your lesson? Instead Allah says, I have sent you a Khalifa on this earth. Someone who will, you know, leave a legacy behind. And someone who's been left behind to take care of business. So judge between people with justice. وَلَا تَتَّبِعِ الْهَوَىٰ فَيُضِلَّكَ عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ And don't follow your whim. Don't follow your gut. Judges can't just say, I have a gut feeling, I'm going to go with this. I find this compelling. Because then it'll take you away, it'll misguide you from the path of Allah. This is, this is the lesson taught to Dawud It's actually a very beautiful lesson in the justice system. The judge cannot have emotional biases, he cannot be under pressure. You know how in corrupt countries, you have judges that are threatened before they go into the court. Their families are held hostage before they go into the court. They're bribed before they go into the court. They have something emotionally bothering them before they go into court. Also, you have cases like divorce law, where the judge himself just went through a divorce. Right, and he's like burnt about it, and then a man and a woman are standing in front of him. Who's he going to favor? He's going to see this, guy, this woman getting divorced, he's going to remember his wife and let it out on her. She gets nothing, you know. Or if it's a woman, the other way around. So the judge has to be emotionally neutral. And if not, he's not going to be able to do his job. That is the lesson we're learning in this beautiful, beautiful surah and this beautiful story about the highest standards of justice that Allah has set and how people that are in, put in a position to make judgments between people should not be people of emotional biases and should not be under stress or distracted at the time that they're passing judgments. This is the, this is the verdict we take and in, in your family, not just in court, this is not just for people that are judges in courts, but in your family when you have to, you know, settle disputes, or work things out between friends and things like that, you better be the neutral party before you, you know, pass any judgment or say anything. And hear both sides out equally, even if you don't like one guy and you like the other guy. You know, you, you better be fair. This is the lesson we take from these remarkable ayat. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Hakim wa nafa'ni wa iyaakum bil ayati wa dhikr al-Hakim. I got a sajda to make.